Thank you. Welcome to the Combat Circle Drill. Now, my name is Matt Numerick. I want to go ahead and want to explain what this drill is all about, how important it is, and also what I want you guys to get out of it, whether you guys are just observing or if you guys can go ahead and actually get some friends to put yourself through this because it's very, very important for everyone's growth right here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to set up a circle. Now, obviously, the circle of a bunch of different people can vary depending on how many people you have. And this is going to tell you the limitations you have of how many elements you can go ahead and put in this drill. I go ahead and I just simply have one, one, two, three, four, five people right here. Each of them have their own weapon or their own kind of attack right here. So if you notice right here, Stephanie has a training gun. Richie uh, has a pad that's gonna handle mostly our unarmed kind of attacks. We have <clears throat> Mark right here, who although he's holding a stick and knife, he's gonna serve two purposes. He's not only gonna do, uh, do what's called our weapons supplier, but he's also gonna be just doing chokes and bear hug. We have Don right here with a knife, and then last but not least, we have Vicky, and Vicky is holding a stick. Now, how do we go ahead and how do we do this drill? Well, this drill is set up in a pretty you know, easy format right here, where one person is gonna be in the middle, that's gonna be me, and then we have five people here surrounding. Now, if we have more people, we can simply put more elements in this, but we're just trying to keep this as simple as possible, and then you guys can go ahead and take a sneak peek into our classes to see what more or less people uh, kind of look like when they're actually in this drill. So, if we have this kind to set up right here all it's going to happen is is that they're going to the person in the middle is going to get attacked in numerous ways they don't know how they're going to get attacked they don't know when they're going to get attacked they don't know who's going to follow who but all you're doing is is simply following however the person is being attacked they're replying with whatever defensive strategy they need to and they're moving on with the next attack now when i talk about the next attack it's very important in this format to go ahead and set it up where the next attack happens incredibly fast it happens almost immediate once they're done with one kind of disarm. So if I have Stephanie right here, let's say, holding a gun right in my face, I wanna go ahead and I wanna go ahead and clear this weapon, disarm this weapon however I need to, and then go ahead and drop this weapon. By the time I start dropping this weapon, the next attack is coming out. Maybe Don's coming on out and he slashes. Once he slashes right here, I go ahead and I get into this kind of defensive strategy and I take this person out. After that happens, maybe I have Mark coming up with a rear choke or something like that. From the rear choke, I go ahead and I take out that person. My point is, is that all of these attacks need to happen one after another as quickly as possible. You know, when I go ahead and I do this drill, I want the person in the middle to actually stop thinking and just start reacting. That is how you build lightning fast kind of results and also reactions, is if you think less. So we wanna make sure that we train all these kinds of situations, all these kinds of scenarios uh, really fully as much as we can. You wanna make sure that you're putting in your gun disarms from different kinds of positions, you know, a stick attack from different, you know, kind of positions. But then we're also gonna throw in one other element, and this is where Mark's second job comes on in. He is what I call the supplier. Now, what I mean by the supplier is, is that as I'm going through this kind of scenario right here, he may drop out, let's say, just a knife right here. So if he does so, I can pick it up. But what's so important is, is that I can only pick it up when I have an opening. Just like if you're in a real life altercation and you see an improvised weapon, I may not be able to get to it quickly. I may need to neutralize a certain kind of a situation or a threat before I get over to that kind of improvised weapon. Same thing right here. You know, if I'm in a scenario right here and let's say Richie comes out, bumps me from right here and I need to handle this person in an unarmed format, well maybe I go ahead and I kick, I go ahead and I take this person out. Once I, this person's out, then I can grab that weapon. How we use this in the drill is, once this person grabs this weapon, they can use it one time up against just simply one attack. Now in this kind of scenario, you're gonna need to know what to do if you have a weapon up against any one of these kinds of scenarios. You know, if I have Vicky, let's say, with a stick come on in here, and she tries to swing right here, okay, I need to know how to handle the situation if I have a knife and she has a stick. If I stand right here in this kind of a range right here, this is the range where her weapon is gonna outclass mine. So what do we need to do? Well, once again, you need to make sure you go ahead and check out the videos that I've done for these kinds of scenarios. Every scenario that we have right here, we have a video that specifically covers what to do in each one of these uh, kinds of situations. But what I want to do is I want you guys to go ahead and take a quick little sneak peek in the classes right here, see some of my students working around this stuff, and I think you'll have fun watching it. So go ahead and do that right now. What is the point of this drill? Well, the point of this drill is really multifaceted. There's a lot of things that I want my students to go ahead and get out of this. First, understand this, is that when you're talking about learning in this kind of scenario, this is why I put in the time to not only put my students through this, but also learn through certain experiences that they're having. If I'm in this drill or I see my students in this 
drill and they're failing for some reason, could it be the tack that they were using? The answer is usually yes. And so that leads us to refining and retuning whatever that tactic is. So this isn't just about someone who's in their basement or garage going ahead and making a self-defense video saying this is what we do against this kind of scenario. By going ahead and pressure testing the tactics and the techniques, that goes ahead and leads to effective and obviously efficient kinds of strategies to deal with whatever scenario that we're dealing with right here. And this isn't just about getting a bunch of people together in a, let's say, a seminar format where we're just going ahead and we're teaching people for a day or two or over a weekend or something like this. This is what I love about being blessed with having a bunch of students who come on in on a weekly basis training this stuff. What we're doing is we're going ahead and not only growing their skills, but we're also evolving the techniques and evolving the tactics. If we find better ways to deal with a certain scenario, then once again, it's going to go ahead and it's going to come out in the result of this. You're going to have people fail over and over again. But that leads me to a huge point of why we do this. We go ahead and we do this drill to make people fail. And I understand that kind of has people maybe a little curious exactly what I mean by that. But when we're talking about this kind of scenario, I want to make sure that people make mistakes because it's those kind of mistakes that breed two things. First of all, they go ahead and they learn how to correct those mistakes. But when they're in the drill right here, they can go ahead and they can correct the mistakes after they screw on up. You know, we understand that in a real life altercation, everything's not going to go as perfectly planned as we may want or we may need. So therefore, when you're in a certain scenario and let's say that I have Don come on in and let's say throw, sh throw a certain kind of attack and I mess on up, I need to make sure that I adapt to that. You know, if I go ahead and let's say I have a certain you know situation where uh, you know Mark comes from behind me and puts me in some kind of a bear hug right here where my arms are up right here, you know, and let's say I said, well, you know what? I want to go ahead. I want to go to some elbow defenses where I want to hit strike him with elbows. And all of a sudden I realize, guess what? My arms are not free, so I can't elbow. Well, then what would I do? Well, then maybe I'm going to go down to a foot stomp, then a headbutt. Well, after that, then my elbows are freed on up. My point is, is that we want to make sure that we fail forward. We want to make sure that we go ahead and we take what we have learned and we progress from there. So if you mess on up in the moment, we need to make sure that we just keep on moving. I see so many people going ahead and doing a drill like this and they freeze on up. Now, those are obviously more beginner level students, but that's my point is that one way you progress from a beginner level student to intermediate practitioner to really a truly an advanced master is by making sure that we make mistakes, we fail forward and we keep on getting better. So thanks so much for going ahead and watching this video. I want to make sure that we go ahead and we close on out, out by watching some more B-roll so you can watch this drill within my classes and see students not just fail forward, but also succeed. Thanks so much. All right, if you guys want to go ahead and see the full version of this video, make sure you check out my OnlyFans account. I'm wearing no clothes whatsoever. And we go. <laughs> Hey guys, I would love for you guys to check out the full classroom version video of this. And what you can do is, is go ahead to go to my Patreon page where I have it posted right there. Check it out. You guys are going to be able to learn so much more and it contains a lot of advanced instruction and tips. Thanks so much.